let's talk about tax-friendly second passports. Because when you're getting a second passport, understanding all the costs of obtaining that citizenship is important, including what are the financial ramifications. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to get a tax-friendly second passport. Hi guys, I'm Andrew Henderson, and if you'd like to learn how our Nomad Capitalist team and myself can help you with your citizenship and holistic offshore tax plans, go to nomadcapitalist.com. We are real world practitioners of this stuff. It's not theory for us. Now let's talk about tax-friendly second passports, because what I think Nomad Capitalist is all about is the confluence of financial independence from government and uh, personal and, and, and freedom uh, having independence from your government from a freedom perspective. A lot of people are out there looking for second citizenships as a way to diversify. Their passport's not a good travel document. Um, they just want more opportunities. They want a plan B. The challenge is, you know, I see a lot of people, I mean, especially a lot of Chinese, for example, or Indians who are lining up to become citizens of the United States, which is going to have a huge uh, impact on their finances. And I think a lot of them haven't been properly advised because where they come from, yeah, you know, okay, you know, pay on your worldwide income, what are you talking about? Right? So. Second passport's important as a way to diversify your, your freedom, have a plan B, possibly to have a plan A, have a place to live, have a place to send your kids to school, et cetera. However, from my perspective as nomad capitalist, you want to do so in a way that is financially uh, good for you. You don't want to take on new tax, tax obligations. Potentially, you want to make your tax obligations better. Now, let me get one thing out of the way, and I've made a video on this. Merely being a dual citizen does not reduce your taxes. You cannot be a US citizen uh, or a British citizen living in the UK and then say, oh, well, even though I'm living in this place or I have this passport that requires me to pay taxes, today I'm going to claim to be St. Lucian. You can't do that. Uh, each country views you as a citizen of their country. They don't really care what else you have. If they allow dual citizenship, it's really more like they tolerate it. So simply going and getting a second passport doesn't mean you can live in your home country and, and claim you don't have to pay tax. That doesn't work. Now, let's talk about the citizenship by investment industry which is probably the way that a lot of people who are looking at tax-optimized passports get started. The citizenship by investment industry, there are five countries in the Caribbean right now, like St. Lucia, Dominica, St. Kitts, that will give you a passport in exchange for a donation. It's a very fast and commoditized process. There are other countries, but, but those are the main ones that people generally start with. And so what you'll see advertised by the firms that sell these passports, obviously, is you know no tax on worldwide income. Now, for most people, that's true, but it's a bit of a misnomer. If you go and live, for example, in St. Lucia or in Dominica, I'm a St. Lucian citizen. If I go and live there and I meet their requirements for tax residence, uh, I'm going to pay tax. They have a residential tax system. Uh, and so their tax systems are a little bit different than, than the UK or, or other you know, Western countries. Uh, but if you, live, if you meet the criteria, i.e. you go to St. Lucia and you just plop yourself down and you live there most of the time, there's a good chance you're going to have some taxes to pay. And so the misnomer is no tax on worldwide income with the caveat that you don't live there. Uh, am I going to go and live in St. Lucia? Yeah, I think it's a very beautiful place. I'm happy to be St. Lucian. Chances are I'm not going to go and live there. It's what we call a passport of convenience. Now, I have other citizenships that I've obtained uh, through quote unquote more normal means, like by living in a place, that kind of thing. Um, and those could be tax friendly as well, because here's the bottom line. Almost any passport, except for the US and Eritrea and possibly one or two that are kind of talking about it, uh, don't tax people who don't live there. If you're a, a citizen of the United Kingdom and you go through the proper steps to not live in the United Kingdom to be what they call a leaver, or potentially you've never lived there and you get the passport through the scent and you just make sure that you're never an arriver, that's a pretty tax friendly second passport. Now, what I always advise people on is is a country like the UK or France or Australia or some of these other countries, are they, do they have the possibility to establish some kind of tax on their expats in the future? Either a US style citizenship taxation or a backdoor, hey, you know what? If you pay less than 10% where you live, just send us the money because paying taxes are our values as politicians. Now, that's my theory. Uh, I do think more and more countries are gonna become more and more, make it more and more difficult to leave in the future. So. 
Uh, is the UK technically a tax-friendly second passport? Sure, if you're an American and you get almost any other second passport, as long as you don't go and live in that country, uh, that could be a lot more tax-friendly than your US passport. But what I think a lot of people misunderstand is you know, how they can use these passports. So let's remove the US passport from the equation. Let's say you're not a US citizen or you're willing to give up your US citizenship. Let's say you be become Dominican. Now, if you choose to live in Dominica, you'll pay tax. That, all, that said, you could also become Dominican, go and live as a resident of France, spend 10 months of your living in France, and France will tax you. Your citizenship has nothing to do with it. Your residence in that case has something to do with it. So that's why once you have a tax-friendly second passport, you want to do good planning of where are you going to live. Um, and so, you know, are you going, you know, where, uh, you know, are you going to live in different places around the world to where you never trigger any tax residency? That's increasingly complicated, requires proper planning. Are you going to go live in a zero tax country, i.e. I have a Dominica passport, but I'm going to live in Dubai where there's zero tax or live in Vanuatu or live in Monaco? That's possible. And so you have to understand both the citizenship part itself and the residence part. Unless you're going to live in your country of citizenship, um, you also have to understand where it is that you're actually spending time. Now, there are plenty of strategies to live tax-free, low tax, but it's not always falling on the citizenship. It's citizenship and it's residence. And so you want to understand there are some countries um, that, you know, most countries, the passport's not going to be what sinks you. Again, if you get that UK passport and you go and live in the UK, it's not a tax-friendly passport anymore because you're living in the UK. Now, there are some countries that do offer passports through citizenship by investment that have no taxes. And so if you're looking for a place where you're guaranteed um, you know, citizenship, as long as you pass the background check, and where you're guaranteed to be admitted to the country, i.e. they can't cancel your residence permit, they can't get rid of you, whatever. Uh, there are a couple countries that offer that. And so for someone who's really concerned about paying low tax and locking in that low tax, then one of these passports would be a good idea. If you want the ultimate in tax-friendly passports, I would consider Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, and to a lesser extent, Vanuatu. Vanuatu's program is really murky. I was there meeting with some of the people in the, you know, in the business community a couple years ago, and they were asking me, because they're, they're tied in with the government, and, and I said, your program's really confusing here. They said, yeah, we thought so. The Vanuatu program is a more difficult one. Sometimes it's a program of last resort for someone who has a problem qualifying somewhere else. Uh, but the big ones would be Antigua and Barbuda and St. Kitts and Nevis. These are countries that have zero personal income tax. I think St. Kitts and Nevis, in my opinion, is probably a little bit uh, more solid in that regard, but Antigua is good. Antigua is actually a little bit um, of a wealthier country. Um, and so all these passports are pretty similar. But one of those three citizenships, you have a country that does not have any taxation. So even if you wanted to live there, you'd be covered. Now, the question is, do you want to live on an island? And if the answer is no, then you probably want to go figure out somewhere else to establish your residence. Again, it could be the Dominica passport that is tax friendly unless you live in Dominica, which you won't. And then you go and live in the UAE or you live in Vanuatu or you live in four different places around the world or you live in Malaysia or a territorial tax country. So there's lots of different ways to slice this. But the ultimate in tax friendly passports is one of those three countries that is totally tax free because you can travel on the passport. And certainly if they don't tax their residents, they're not going to tax their non-residents. So you've got the total freedom to live there and not live there, not be taxed. Uh, if, if that's your goal, if I were advising you in a passport portfolio, I might look at that depending on your circumstance. If you'd like some help figuring out all the citizenship and residence ramifications and tax planning and where you're going to live and where you're going to travel, we do this stuff every day for folks. You can learn more at nomadcapitalist.com. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.